Hi guys, my name is Jenny. I'm from Costa Rica, also from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Right now I work at Mirabred and I'm a food prep, also a dining room cleaner and soup server. And sometimes I help out in the kitchen. And my favorite hobbies are singing, dancing, reading, writing, and watching TV or movies. I'm also bilingual, so I can speak two languages, which are English, Spanish, and right now I'm living, I'm learning a little bit of Portuguese. My grandparents want to learn English, so I help them a little bit. How do you use supportive decision making? Um, I use supportive decision making by making my own choices and thinking twice before I do something. And I also have my supportive decision making forms. So I use that for the bank, healthcare, and dentist. And once or twice a year, eye appointments, because sometimes doctors or healthcare workers don't really understand that, and neither do bank workers, because they're not always aware of that. I do use it once a month for writing my own checks. How about mom is currently my rep AE. Soon, anytime soon, I'm about to become my own rep AE if I keep approving or making progress. Sometimes me and my mom will help each other go through my budget and we use it for other purposes like moving out and I ask mom for help so she's part of my life and basically I make my own decisions like daily choices and stuff because I'm very independent. It feels great honestly I feel much better versus being on guardianship because if I was on guardianship, then my guardian would control me and take away my rights, like voting and going to work and also going to other places and doing other fun stuff. Then I'd have to be controlled by him or her and being controlled or being taking advantage of is not right. That's never right to do. I don't allow people to ask or tell me what to do in a demanding way. And I want to date or marry someone who I approve of, not somebody who will use me or take advantage of me in any way. You can choose your own opinion. It makes you feel much better versus other people choosing or making choices for you. What would you tell other self-advocates about supportive decision-making, Jenny? I'd tell them, please use supportive decision-making and please use it wisely. Don't think too fast. Don't rush yourself and don't get guardianship because if you do, then your guardian might um, Take away your rights and your freedom and whatever else you need, especially for election day, like voting or go out for fishing, hunting, all that fun stuff. So what would it, what would you tell uh, an advocate if their parent they're afraid to talk to their parents about supportive decision making because they don't want their um, advocate or person with a disability to fail. What would you tell them? Um, I would tell them, please take one step at a time and don't rush, don't get yourself in trouble and use, use your supportive decision making skills wisely. Same with your self-advocacy skills because you are yourself, you are a person and you should know that. Everyone should know that. And if you become a self-advocate, you might be proud of yourself. 
tell us about being a youth ambassador. Well, I'm a youth ambassador because I get to join meetings and meet new people and make new friends. And sometimes I also get to join conferences like the ASW one and Circles of Life and Self Determination, which is my favorite conference, even though it was my first time going and I get to learn lots of new interesting things about you know supportive decision making versus being under guardianship which is not good and we get to make our own decisions like independent grown-up adults when I go to conferences I get to present for a couple audiences or sometimes a big group of people and makes me feel proud. At first I get very shy and nervous, but when there's like when there's help I talk a little bit and not to get so shy and nervous anymore. It takes time and patience, but it's worth trying. Jenny, you and I presented at the autism conference, so what did you think about that? Yes, we did. The presentation was good. It was my first in-person presentation. And I was very shy, not wanting to talk at first. Proud of myself. And it's okay to stand up and speak up for yourself because of your self-advocacy skills. And that's what self-advocates do. What have you learned from this project? Um, so far, I've learned a lot of things like personal growth and confidence. So I'm still kind of camera shy and talking with others like on Zoom meetings. And I also get to discover virtual meetings versus in person ones. You know, I like in person meetings better than Zoom ones. I did a YouTube video it was only one and it was for the self-determination channel and at first i was very very shy i didn't want to talk i didn't know what to say or do and at the conference suzanne helped me become a roaming reporter and i was also very like very shy and, and then i had to like i had to walk around and talk with people and ask them some questions like, um, how's the conference and what did you learn? Jenny, tell us a little bit about your goals. Right now, my goals are to live alone maybe someday and work full time and perhaps get my driver's license. And my other goals is to be successful in life. So I'd like to work on another presentation if they ask or invite me to do it and then, you know, go to another event like the self-advocacy day, which might be in March, like late March. And I also want to improve my eye contact like on Zoom and then my video camera skills, like talking directly at the camera or like, talking directly with people. I also want to become a little more confident because I'm still kind of shy slash timid. I appreciate being part of this project and I also appreciate your time and company. So thanks for helping me out and thanks for joining the monthly Zoom meetings and thanks for helping me with my confidence. See you next time.